Welcome to the program, friend. In today's episode, we're going to explore with Judge Moore how the Supreme Court ruling is not law. It's not constitutional. It's not law. And we'll discuss how and why they could and should be impeached. For those of you who are Ted Cruz supporters, you know that Mr. Cruz, Senator Cruz, is out there saying that we need to amend our Constitution so that these judges don't have lifetime appointments and maybe us voters can get them out. I agree with him, but there already is a mechanism in the, in the Constitution to deal with these people. It's called impeachment. And Judge Moore clearly, concisely, constitutionally shows how they have violated their oath of office and they can and should be impeached. I hope that you enjoyed today's episode. I'll talk to you at the end. Um, do you believe that the, that the judges violated their oath of office? They're sworn to the Constitution. The Constitution has no word in it about marriage. And that's, that's remarkable. If they're going to redefine a word that's not even in the Constitution, how is that not a violation of the Tenth Amendment, which states clearly that the powers not delegated to the United States by the Constitution nor prohibited by it to the states are reserved to the states respectively or to the people. Uh, there's no power given to the federal government as Justice Kennedy in his own writing in 2013 in U.S. versus Windsor recognized. There is no power given to the federal government over marriage. That was left to the states. And today that's been taken and a majority has dictated uh, that to the states. Okay, there's, there's so many politicians right now who are saying that this is outside of the rule of law, that they went beyond their constitutional authority. So we, hear, clearly. we yeah. hear all these words, but then if that is the case, is this an, an impeachable offense? Well, four justices on the Supreme Court, that being Justice, Chief Justice Roberts, Justice Scalia, Justice Thomas, and Justice Alito, all said that about the opinion. Right, that this they is basically a lawless. It was completely outside the Constitution. And, so therefore, and basically, even the majority opinion didn't reference the Constitution that much. It represents how they felt the, right, about the, things. The 5th and, and 14th Amendment, a really bizarre, twisted... Well, what about the 5th and 14th Amendment that is strained is back in eight, 1986, the United States Supreme Court, in the case of Bowers versus Hardwick, addressed what the court did here today. Which said, Bowers versus Hardwick said that the rules against that behavior were constitutional. They said there's no constitutional right to commit sodomy in the Constitution in 1986. And they said, nor are we inclined to take a more expansive view of our authority to discover new fundamental rights embedded in the due process clause. The court is most vulnerable and comes nearest to illegitimacy when it deals with judge-made constitutional law having little or no cognizable roots in the language or the design of the Constitution. Say that, That's say exactly that what the, it is. Say that in the vernacular of the common folk. It says when uh, the court is illegitimate, when judges start making constitutional law which has nothing to do with the Constitution. There you go. And right. using so, words that are not in the Constitution. <laughs> it then went on to say, therefore, we should there should be great resistance to expand the substantive reach of the Fifth and Fourteenth Amendment, particularly if it requires redefining a category of rights deemed to be fundamental. Then listen to these words. Mm -hmm. Otherwise, the judiciary necessarily takes to itself further authority to govern the country without express constitutional authority. They're usurping power to themselves, That's making right. themselves and they're, tyrants. they're governing the country without authority to do so. So, again, I ask, in your opinion, and I'm, I'm inviting you onto thin ice, perhaps, but do you think that they have committed an impeachable offense? I think they can be impeached. Now, there's two ways to impeach, in my, in my opinion. Okay. Uh, one is, is the fact that they've just exceeded their authority of the Constitution. And here's here's the, the clauses under the the Constitution. Article uh, 2, Section 4 says, shall be removed from office on impeachment for and conviction of treason, bribery, or other high crimes and misdemeanors. The other way, under Article 3, is that in such inferior courts, and uh, the judges both of the Supreme and inferior courts shall hold their office during good behavior, and <laughs> question, it's questionable whether this is good behavior, and I'll say a reason for that. 
Justice Ginsburg and Justice Kagan both had performed same-sex marriages. And under 28 U.S.C. 455, it requires their recusal when impartiality, quote, may reasonably be questioned. Now, if you're out performing same-sex marriages and then go into case to determine whether that's legal and you say under the Constitution of the United States, I think that's when your, your impartiality may reasonably question. Right. You have two choices. I mean, you can try to raise your children by design or you will raise them by default. There are no perfect parents. We're gonna get it wrong sometimes. If we have a plan, we've got a better chance of getting it right in the long run. There is something deep within the heart of every human being that longs for parental acceptance and approval. When does a boy become a man? Get a group of guys around and ask them that question. I don't think there's a certain age. Some men stay boys their whole life. I would say, uh, what, 16, 18 years old? Wow, that's a good question. When they get bar mitzvah. Well, I think when he has a child. So I just became at 56, yeah, 56 years old. Without the power of the Holy Spirit changing us and giving us power over our sin, we can't hope to be the dads that our kids need us to be.